Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's clip is a review of the brand new Osmo Pocket charging case from DJI. This product was designed to safely cradle and protect your Osmo Pocket while you're traveling, but it also includes an internal 1500 milliampere hour LiPo battery that will recharge your Osmo Pocket every time you slide it inside the case. And the DJI engineers didn't stop there. They've also built in storage locations for a lot of the common accessories you'll bring along for a day of filming. Things like the universal port connector you can use to hook up your phone as an external monitor, or micro SD cards, you want to bring a couple of those along, that's fine. Even ND filters that you're going to pop on the front of the Osmo Pocket to adjust for really bright days to get that perfect shot can all be organized in this tiny little case, so they're easy to find. And that's one thing I love about it, because a lot of the stuff is tiny, and if I throw it in my backpack or my pocket, I'm constantly fishing around looking for an extra micro SD card, so the fact that it's all inside this beautiful little canister means that I can charge it, grab it, and go out and know I have everything I need for the day. Now, I've had the product for a couple of weeks. I've been traveling nonstop since the thing arrived, so I've got a lot of experience using it out in the field, both charging the unit, using the unit to charge my Osmo Pocket, and I've fallen in love with it. But I'm going to try and cover everything in this clip so you'll understand exactly what the product can provide. And I'll start off with an unboxing to show you what comes with the kit. Then I'll take a closer look at the unit itself, show you how to put the Osmo Pocket in it, and where all those locations are to store those accessories, because the manual is a little confusing there. I'll also talk a little bit about my experience in the field with this product, and and then finally I'll come back and do some, sort of a conclusions at the end because it isn't a cheap accessory and I know people out there are thinking it's too expensive, I don't need it, it's complicated. It's a personal choice. I can't tell you whether it's worth the money or not, that's up to you guys. But I'll try and compare it to other accessories for other gear you might own to give you a feel for where that price fits in that spectrum of, of cost. So I like it, I use it, I endorse it, but again it's a personal decision so I'll try and justify that a little bit at the end of this clip. So let's get started with the unboxing. <laughs> there's not a lot to look at. When you pop open the box there's two little styrofoam end pieces that hold this neatly in the center and it's in a bag. I didn't think I needed to unbox it in front of you but that's basically what you get. Other than that the Osmo Pocket charging case is in there and a manual's in there. That's all you get. Now, there are no cables, there's no chargers. And when I first opened it up, I was surprised by that because I thought, well, at least a cable should be in there. But then I'm thinking it's an accessory for the original Osmo Pocket and I got a charging cable there. But it's a standard USB-C connection on the bottom, just like it is on the bottom of the Osmo Pocket. So the original cable will work and you can use pretty much any charger out there. I would suggest using a charger that can supply at least two amps of current. 2.1 or 2.4 is even better. But any wall charger you've got will work to charge this guy. And the beauty is when the Osmo Pocket's inside the case, you're not only charging the battery internally here, but you're charging the Osmo Pocket. So it's one connection to charge both of them. You get a really complete owner's manual. It explains a lot about the product. There are diagrams showing you where all the tiny little pieces will fit inside there. There's a secret decoder ring over here that explains what these LEDs mean. So there's an LED in the bottom of the unit that shows you what kind of internal charge you've got. There's also an LED in the front of the Osmo Pocket. And the way the screen is set up is there's a little window down the bottom. When you pop in the Osmo Pocket, you can actually see the charging light through the screen. So you can tell, based on that secret decoder ring, exactly how much power is in the unit and how much power is being transferred to the Osmo Pocket. Now, it's not important that you remember that or memorize it because generally... Orange means you're getting low, and green means you're in pretty good shape. Now, blinking green means something different, but you'll figure it out on your own, and I can cover that if you want, but it's pretty straightforward. The unit itself is gorgeous. It's just really well designed. It's made of a high-impact plastic, sort of a brushed aluminum exterior. It's a very high-end looking unit. Reminds me a lot of the stuff that comes out of the Apple Labs. Uh, you've got the Osmo Pocket name on the front. You've got sort of a fabric here that gives it really a high-end look, like I said. On the bottom, nice rubber ring here to keep it off the table and keep it secure. And you've got a USB-C connection on the bottom and a little latch. Now, this is pretty cool. It's a bit of a Star Trek move here. When you pull that latch, watch the front. So it slides open. Isn't that cool? I mean, they could have made it very simple and just flipped it open with your thumb, but I like the little extra touch there. I think that's kind of cool. When you open it up, people ooh and ah, so it's kind of nice. All right, so if you stay tuned, oh, let me show you this. So on the bottom, when you close it, let me do it again. See how it's blinking green? That's your indicator of how much power you've got in the unit. So if you want to test this thing out in the field, you'd open it up and close it, and it'll tell you. Now, if that blinks orange, it'll tell you that you're pretty low on power, but if it's green, that means you've got plenty of power in there to charge the Osmo. All right, so let me stop at this point with the overview and get into the closer look stuff because I'm sure you're curious about how that fits inside there and where all the doodads fit. So stay tuned and we'll get into that next. Now we'll take a closer look at the Osmo Pocket charging case. And we'll start with the outside of the unit. Now, as I mentioned, it's got a bit of a brushed aluminum feel to it. And even though it's a composite plastic, 
the choice of that material is really nice because a lot of times these accessories come out and they're like reflective plastic, like very cheap looking units. And the minute you pick the thing up, you're gonna get fingerprints all over it. So this satiny finish tends to hide a lot of those fingerprints and just gives it a really high end look. On the front of the unit, you've got a cloth covering over the door with a nice Osmo logo on there. Again, it tends to add to that high end look. So overall, I think they did a great job at the execution of this. On the bottom of the unit, you've got a couple of things to take note of. Rubber ring here, which adds cushioning when you put it down on a desk. You've got a single USB-C connection right here, which is the only connection you'll make to the unit to power both the internal battery to charge it and to power the Osmo Pocket to charge that. So one connection, you're charging both at the same time. Then you've got a latch release down here, which will open the front door. Now I'll pop open the door in a second, but before I do, I wanna mention, again, they could have cut corners and just put a spring mechanism in the bottom, and this thing would have sprung open, but it's gonna jostle your Osmo when it does that. So notice the dampening when I open this door, how slow and smooth that is. That took some engineering to do that, and I know it's a small point, but that tells me as an engineer that they're taking their time to think about what you're gonna use this for, to not jostle your Osmo Pocket it too badly when you open it. It's such a cool feel when that thing opens up. It just looks really high end. And, and maybe it's the nerd in me talking, but it looks a lot like a door opening on a Star Trek Enterprise. So let me put it this way and add some sound effects, see if you think the same thing. So here comes the door. Zoom. There you go. Then Captain Kirk walks out. <laughs> All right, so that's enough of my nerdy. But anyway, in the bottom of the unit, you've got a nice trough down here for storage, and you've got spots for two micro SD cards over, over here as well. Now, depending on what you're carrying, it'll all fit inside the unit. Right now, I've got two of the universal port connectors, two micro SD cards, and I've got the cover plate on the Osmo Pocket. I tend to use that an awful lot when I'm not using my phone as a monitor, so I want to be able to fit all that stuff inside the Osmo Pocket because for you to insert the Osmo into this and actually take advantage of the charging, you can can't have anything on that universal port. So the first thing I'll do is slide this guy off. Now, if you look over here, you see those two micro SD cards. I'll put those in first. So I carry a couple extra ones with me just in case I need to leave one with a customer or maybe I've got one I want to swap out and review it. So I'll put those two guys in there. And there's no electrical connections at all. It's just a force fit into foam behind that. So they hold them nice and snug there. They're not going to fall out. Then down the bottom, you've got a couple of choices in this trough. Obviously, if you're carrying ND filters, which I don't have with me today, I actually lent two of my ND filter set uh, kits to friends that are filming this weekend and I got to get them back. But either side here will hold two ND filters each. So you can put two there and two on this end. Then the trough in the center is for the universal connectors. And I found that if you're using the blank plate, that'll pop really nicely into one of these end units as well. So I'll start with that and I'll pop it into this end of the trough. Just push down gently and it sticks right in there. And then with these two universal port connectors, you're going to put them in where the tips are facing in. So you'll start with this one, flip it over, stick it in the trough like that, drop it down, and then just push it all the way to the end so you've got room for the other one. Then the second one would fit in the opposite direction on that end of the trough. And again, you can push these back to give yourself plenty of space. And the tip should marry up in the center just about there, just like that. And you're set to go. And again, those are just force fit in there. It's not like really hard to get them in, but they're not falling out. And I like that because then when I'm carrying around, there's nothing rattling inside. Now to add the Osmo Pocket, you're gonna marry up the universal port with this adapter right here. And that's where all the power is gonna come from the internal battery to charge your Osmo Pocket. So you wanna lay it like this, make sure the camera's straight up like that, align it up with that port, and then gently slide it down onto the port. And you'll feel it click in, the camera will sit straight up and close this latch. I've forgotten to do that a few times. I haven't had any issues, but that latch right there will hold this Osmo Pocket down nice and tight against that connector. Then you can flip the door closed and you're good to go. Now notice when I do that a couple seconds later, the green light comes on, which means I've got plenty of charge and I'm charging the Osmo Pocket. And in the front, you can see the actual charge indicator on the Osmo Pocket blink as well. So let me close that door again. I think it's full, so it's not gonna actually blink for long. But when it first makes the connection, I close the door, the electronics kicks in, checks the charge level of the Osmo Pocket. If it needs a charge, it'll actually start charging it from the internal battery. Luckily for me, this is fully charged at this point, so you're not gonna see them come on. But it is nice to see that LED there because if it's sitting in your bag and you're wondering, gee, is the Osmo charged or not? If that's blinking, it means it's still drinking from that internal lipo, lipo battery that's inside the charging dock. But right now we're good to go, everything is charged. And again, if you wanna check that charge level, open and close the door, you'll see that LED come on. On. The fact that it's on full means that I've got a full charge on this. That's going to blink out in a second. That means the Osmo is charged as well. And that's pretty much it for the Osmo Pocket charging case from a closer look perspective. But I love the fact that everything fits in there. Nothing's rattling and it's securely held in that case. And when I take this with me, I know I have everything I need to film for that afternoon. I hope taking a closer look was helpful. 
And in this last section, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the unit itself, because as I mentioned, I've really had a chance to use it an awful lot over the last couple of weeks under a wide variety of circumstances, and I wanted to give you an idea how it held up. I've charged it in hotel rooms, I've charged it in the car between locations, I've even charged it off of portable battery banks. Matter of fact, the day I was leaving for the travel, this thing showed up that morning, I grabbed it, threw it in my suitcase. The first time I charged it was in the airplane while I was reading through the manual. So it's really done a pretty good job of covering all the needs that I have with the product. But before I get too deep into it, I'm gonna focus primarily on the organizational capabilities of it and the charging capabilities. And I know some people out there are probably gonna watch the clip and go, Rick, I don't need this thing. I've already got a way to do charging with a portable battery bank, and I've got a nice little case for my Osmo Pocket that holds all the accessories. This is overkill. I get it. And I'm a big fan of using what you have because there's a variety of solutions that will accomplish the same thing. So if you've got a solution, you're good to go. This clip is more for people that are considering it to see, is it worth the money? What's the value there? And should I spend my hard-earned money on an accessory like this? So I'll try and answer that question. Having said all that, I'm going to give you kind of a tip here. I like it. I like it a lot, and I'm using it a lot. But there are things about it that aren't perfect, and I'll talk about those as well when we get to the end of this clip, because the few things about it, as an engineer, have me scratching my head about the design. I'll get into that in the end. Nothing major, all just minor little nits, but I feel like i got to bring them up. Let's talk about the organizational capabilities first. So the Osmo Pocket, by design, is small, which means all the accessories you're going to use with the Osmo Pocket are small. And a big guy like me, where my eyes aren't so great because I'm getting a little bit old, they're tiny. They're like doll-like size. And I feel sometimes like in that story, Gulliver's Travels, I feel like Gulliver, where everything is so tiny that I can't remember what I did with it. So it's in my backpack. I have to fish around for stuff. I leave a location. I want to make sure I have all my ND filters, my memory cards, all the stuff I need, my universal port connectors. This thing solves all those problems. It gives me a place to hide all those accessories. And I know I've got them. More importantly, I can open up the case and say, okay, yeah, all four ND filters are in there. The two micro SD cards. Oh yeah, my universal port connectors are in there. Wait a minute, I'm missing the one for the Apple product. Oh, it's on the desk over here in the hotel room. So it gives me a pause and a place to organize all my stuff. And I love that it's small enough where I can slide it in my backpack and be off and running. So organizationally, it's a home run. And again, the challenge is a lot of the cases that are out there for the Osmo Pocket that are bigger, you put all the stuff in there and it fits inside. But by the time you're done and you zip it up, you've got a large case. And that kind of defeats the purpose of portability for me. Some of them are as big as DSLRs. I don't want to do that. I don't want to carry a big case with me when something small and well-designed like this will cover all my bases. So for me, the organizational aspects are outstanding. I can fit everything in there. Now, you can't fit every accessory in there. It would have been great had they put provisions in there to hold the audio adapter or maybe the Wi-Fi base. But then, all of a sudden, it's not this small. It's the size of a tennis can. And we've got the same problem with carrying something big. I mean, if you look at this, this is a minimalist design. I mean, this thing is barely larger than the Osmo Pocket itself. So I think they've done a great job organizing everything inside that case. And for me, that's a home run. That's a major plus because even though it's a couple extra bucks to buy something like this, losing an ND filter, losing a universal port connector or a really high capacity micro SD card is expensive and I end up replacing those. So having them in one place that I can know they're there and know that I've got all of them with me is a good thing. So for me, that's a plus. Charging capabilities. Internal battery is 1,500 milliampere hours. The battery in the Osmo Pocket is about 875 milliampere hours. So if you do the math, you can't quite get two completely exhausted charges into an Osmo Pocket from the internal battery. My experience in the field is that I'll use the Osmo Pocket for most of the day, pop it in the case, it'll charge it back up. If I'm between locations in an hour or two, it'll charge it pretty quickly. I've got a full Osmo Pocket. I use it again, pop it back in the case, it'll charge it a third time, so or a second time. So it, it gives me a day's worth of charge by using that product. Whereas the Osmo Pocket on its own didn't really work well for me. Now I know I can use a charging brick, I can bring one of those along with me, but again, if you're carrying even a 10,000 milliampere hour charging brick, it's in your pocket, you've got a cable dangling while you're charging, it's extra stuff to hang on to. So it does work, it's not as elegant a solution. This is clean, it's, it's very easy to use and it works. So for me, it's a home run. They could have made the charger, the battery a little bit larger, but again, you can't beat the laws of physics. So the bigger the battery, the heavier, the bigger it's going to be physically, which means this has got to be bigger. So I think they struck a really good balance between size and functionality for me. And I get a full eight hours, 10 hours out of it once I charge the internal battery and then use it to charge the Osmo Pocket. So that works out well uh, for me as well. Now, I know people are going to say, but Rick, it's $130. How can you spend that kind of money in a case like this? Just from the charging capabilities alone, if you guys have any kind of phone out there, you know there's a bunch of brands that make specialized cases that slide onto your phone, that plug into your phone to double or triple your battery so you can use it for a day and a half or two days, or if you're doing a lot of videoing, you can get a full day's use out of it. A lot of those battery cases 
$80, $100. I've seen them as high as $150. So that's just the battery case. There's no organizational capabilities. The other thing you got to remember, and I sound like I'm defending DJI here, but you have to remember it's a specialty product. You're not going to see this sort of a general product where they can sell it to everybody. They're only selling this to Osmo Pocket users. So of course it's going to be a little more expensive because it's purposely designed to fit the Osmo Pocket and the market's smaller. So from the engineering side, the price is a little higher than I'd like. I thought it would be better in the $119 or $99 range. Maybe it'll come down. I don't know. But I think for me, between the organizational capabilities and the charging capabilities, it does everything I need it to do. So I'm really, really happy with the product. Now I'm going to get to the nits that I was picking on before. The first one, which makes no sense to me whatsoever, and I'm sorry, DJI, but i got to be honest like I am in all my reviews. What were you thinking with the charging connector on the bottom of the unit? You've got a rubberized ring on there where I'm going to stand it up on my desk to charge it but the connector's on the bottom. So I have two choices. I either flip it over and charge it like that, which is fine, but I've got a cable dangling. It's not the most elegant solution, but more importantly, I've got this surface here on my desk, which is gonna get scratched and dinged up. My other alternative is to put it like this and charge it, but then it's gonna roll all over the desk while I'm charging it. It makes no sense to me that that USB-C connection is there instead of on the back. It could have easily exited out the back. The other challenge I've got with that is if I'm setting this down on any kind of surface, whether it's a hotel room, in the airplane, on location, those are exposed to any kind of fuzz and dust on the desk. It's not really elevated enough off the desk to keep this thing from getting dust and debris and stuff down the bottom. So you got to be really careful with that. I'm always cleaning it off whenever I'm taking it and throwing it in my backpack. So it's a minor problem. I mean, it works. You can charge it. It's great. But for me, I think the design engineer should have put that port in the back. So it would have been a nice clean, stand it up, have a port come out the back and you're good to go. Now I'm sure that there are accessory companies out there already fast at work for some kind of base you can pop this thing onto that probably has a USB-C connection up like this and a right angle one out the back like that so it'll correct for that problem. Or maybe they've got a little cradle you can sit it in like this where you can charge it off the end. I don't know, but for me that's not enough for me to hate the thing. Another thing I'd like to see changed, and maybe this is something they can do through firmware, is this is input only. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could use that USB-C connection to charge something else like my phone or something else that's with me? And I know it would give me less life out of the internal battery. It's only 1500 milliampere hours, but there have been days where I'm out there filming with my Osmo Pocket and my phone and my phone's starting to get a little bit weak. It'd be great if I could connect it up to this and have it transfer that power or the electrons out of there into my phone. And again, I think that's probably a firmware fix because as I've mentioned before, you've got intelligence inside here. There's a charge controller that protects the internal LiPo battery from overcharging, overcurrent, over temperature which are all the wonderful things you want to make sure you're not going to damage the battery of the Osmo. It'd be easy in firmware to flip that to allow electrons to flow back out of this. So hopefully they'll take these suggestions. I'm going to pass them upstream on both counts. And, and I, you know, I would hate to see a dock come out for this thing that I got to spend more money on, but that dock can't be that expensive. It's basically a pass through for USB-C, but that reverse charge or that exit charge for the electrons would be a good positive thing. But those are the only two complaints that I've got, and they're minor, to be honest with you. Honestly, it does 99.5% of the stuff that I expect it to do. It's a little more expensive than I'd like, but I think for 130 bucks for me to have this package to take with me, throw it in my backpack, and again, I charge it, throw it in the backpack, and I'm off and running for the day. And when I pop this thing open, everything I need to film that day is in there. And that's important because there's nothing worse than getting to a location, ready to start filming, and realize I'm missing my ND4. Or I've only got one memory card, and I promised whoever that I'm going to give them a copy of it. I wish I had a second memory card with me. This way I know I got everything inside the kit. So that's pretty much it. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, please drop them in the comments below, and I promise to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you have suggestions, for the case, for the Osmo, or for any accessories, let me know because I talk to DJI on a regular basis and I pass information along all the time from people that have bought their products and want improvements or changes made. And a lot of times they definitely reflect that in future versions of firmware. So if there's things you want to have changed or things you were concerned about, let me know. I'll pass them along. Let me be your conduit through to DJI. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you're interested in the product, I bought this one. It wasn't a sponsored review. I paid you know, money just like you guys do. But if you want to buy one of those, please use the link below because we get a little credit from DJI and kind of helps us in our stature with the company when new products come out. But other than that, I really love putting these clips together. I hope you guys are enjoying them. And as I say every time, as long as you guys are finding value in them, we'll keep making them. So until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.